Hey, it's Derek Kilmartin from CodeOpinion.com, and there's this common belief in domain-driven design that you want to keep your domain pure, meaning no dependencies, no services, no distractions. And I get it, because you don't want that core logic to be coupled things like infrastructure concerns, database calls. You want it to be deterministic because you want it to be testable. But somewhere along the way, this advice turned into dogma that you can inject behavior into your domain. But I'm gonna challenge that because if you're modeling your domain and capturing your behavior, you can with double dispatch. Used correctly, you can write expressive, testable code that you can inject into your domain in the form of policies and specification. It actually might be the most DDD thing you can do. So let's start off with a simple example to illustrate double dispatch and injecting behavior into your domain. So here's, we have a simple shipment where I'm injecting in the system clock and then we have one method of is late. And this is really the where the behavior is is that we have a parameter of expected delivery and we're just comparing with the system clock of what right now is and if it's greater than the expected delivery then it's late before i refactor this using double dispatch i'd like to thank current for sponsoring this video current's an event native data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context in fine-grained streams from origination to destination enhancing data analytics and ai outcomes for more on current check out the link in the description now let's refactor this a little bit using double dispatch. Now double dispatch is when an object doesn't act on its own data. Rather, it's gonna delegate that decision-making process to another object. In DDD, we can use the form of policies and specifications for this. So the first thing I have is this interface for I delivery timing policy to kind of illustrate this. And I'm gonna have two implementations. So we basically have to implement is late, where we're gonna be passing in the shipment. So the first one here is the standard delivery timing, which is exactly what my illustration was before, the same logic, which is we're not gonna be passing in the system time, rather we're gonna be passing in a date time that represents now. Then for our implementation, we have our shipment that's getting passed in as a parameter, and we're just gonna compare now to the shipment delivery date to determine if it's late. So that was kind of exactly like our example was before. But I've created another uh, implementation of this to illustrate is that we're gonna have a buffer delivery timing. So basically what we're gonna say is whatever the delivery date is, we're gonna add a little bit of buffer to it. It could be minutes, hours, whatever, days. Um, and then that's gonna really what's gonna determine whether it's really late or not. So if we have a delivery time of right now, for example, and we wanna add 30 minutes to it, that's our 30 minutes is what our buffer is gonna be. So our implementation is that. We're gonna be comparing now with a shipment delivery date, and we're just gonna add some buffer to that delivery date, which is gonna determine whether it's late or not. And now this is where we get into double dispatch. Like I mentioned, an object not really acting on its own, but delegating, and then that delegation is kind of doing that determination. So my shipment now, when I call is late on it, I'm gonna be passing that policy. And this is the dis double dispatch portion, portion, is that the policy that we inject, which could have been one of those two implementations, we're passing this, which is the shipment. So we're passing the shipment information to something separate, some other uh, object, that it's gonna use that data, that information, to decide whatever the behavior is. So this exact example here of kind of injecting that behavior and then calling it and passing our own shipment information along is double dispatch. What this allows us to do is have our domain of our shipment still have ownership over determining if something's late or not, but it can delegate that out using double dispatch with different policies. And because we have different policies, that doesn't mean that we have to then hard code, like my first example, what the rule was. We're essentially deciding with double dispatch and that policy, what the rule is. The policy really defines the rule. And testing, it's all very straightforward because it's deterministic. So we're defining our shipment and our policy. So my shipment, the delivery date was yesterday. I'm testing our standard delivery timing. So we're specifying that right now is today. And yes, it is late because the delivery date was yesterday and we're testing that today is right now. And then I can test our buffer as well where I'm defining our shipment. Let's say that the delivery date is 15 minutes ago. And when we create our policy, we're specifying that right now is right now. And But what our buffer is, is 30 minutes. So no, it's not late because we've defined that 30 minute buffer. All of this is very kind of straightforward because it's all deterministic. Now you might be saying, no, 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 you broke the rule. You passed that policy into your domain. You can't do that. But I passed in a business concept, some domain concept. That policy is a rule within that problem space that makes sense. That's what it's built around. I'm not passing in a database or a logger. I'm passing in 
some type of domain concept into my domain. If anything, you're putting the behavior back into your domain at this point. So here's another example, but what I really wanna talk about is how you build up these rules. So first I have the shipment readiness rule and I have three implementations. So basically I have it is satisfied by and we're passing this shipment. So we're just still same thing, doing double dispatch here. The first simple example I have of this is has a valid uh, destination. So we're checking the shipment, just make sure it has a destination. Our second rule here is that the all the packages are packed. So we're just iterating through our packages, making sure that all of them have the is packed property to true. Again, just a simple example, as well as that it, the shipment already hasn't been shipped out already. So not already shipped rule, and then just checking the status. So here's our double dispatch. We have can ship. We're taking in an innumerable, essentially a collection of all these rules, and we're just checking all of them that they pass and that they are true. Now, what I really wanna focus on here is just a really simple example of if you were like in a multi-tenant SaaS application or any type of system where these rules would be configurable. How do you know which ones to pass in? Well, likely you're getting that from some type of storage, some type of configuration. And again, if you're in kind of a SaaS multi-tenant environment, well, you could be fetching out what those rules are based off configuration. So we get our shipment, we get what our rules are based off that sh shipment, could be based off the customer, for example. And then that's what we're actually building up what our rules are that we can pass to can ship. And testing is exactly the same way. Same way. We can build up our shipments, build up our rules, and kind of assert and act on those. Everything's deterministic, but really the thing I want to point up is because all that is, and we're passing all this information in, we pass all these rules and policies in, we can build them up kind of at our application layer to pass that into our domain. So it's injecting something into your domain via say constructor injection or passing a dependency as an argument to some domain method. Is that terrible and you should never do it? No, not when you're actually passing in domain behavior and your domain model still ultimately owns because it's the entry point. It really owns all the decisions. It just may de delegate out some of that decision making process with a little help but ultimately it's still the entry point. It still owns the decision. So let's get over this dogma that your domain can't have any dependencies. It absolutely can when you wanna to delegate to other domain concepts. We're not talking about loggers, database connections. We're talking about things like policies and specifications. At the core of this, the real truth of the matter of why do you not wanna have dependencies, it's about coupling. What are you actually coupling to? Are you coupling to domain concepts or are you coupling to infrastructure concerns? There's a big difference. So get in the comments and let me know if you're using double dispatch or if you define things like specifications or policies. A lot of times when I bring up videos like this, people are realizing, oh, I didn't even know that was what it was called or et cetera. Are you doing this already? You just didn't know what it was called. Get in the comments. And thank you to everybody that supports my channel. The link's in the description on how you can join if you wanna support my channel. And you can also get access to our private Discord server, where a lot of times that's actually kind of where I get some ideas for some of my videos. Links in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, get in the comments and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.